If you like to post quotes with images on social media, then why not uplevel your game and share kinetic text animated video quotes? Although video is more effort, with the right template approach, you can make some interesting video quotes quickly. In this video, you'll learn how to create a cool, pivoting, kinetic text animated quote featuring the new fly-in behavior effect in Camtasia. And you can even download the free Camtasia 2018 project file so that you can customize your own video quotes. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to be successful with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. The first step in a project like this is to source your quote and then determine the, the style that you want to deliver the quote on screen. So in our case, we're using a pivoting text approach. So I took this quote by Greg Anderson and then I broke it up into three line sets so that I only have approximately at most three lines per line set that goes on screen so I can maximize the space and usage of the screen. And you can see how that's implemented here when we just scan through and you see there's basically three different sets of lines that, that come out. Let's take a quick look at the design. On the bottom here, you see we have our motion background. That's that piece right there on the bottom. Then next up we have, you're going to see here, there's three line sets which contain our pivoting kinetic text. So as you can see in here, there's all the text bits. And in addition, you see we have the usage of the flying behavior all over. So that's how the structure works for each of these sets. And you're going to see here on each group, there's a little pivot. That's the animation right here on this one. And then you're going to see a similar animation right here which does a pivot for the next set. So as you can see, there's a lot going on here. And then we have our sound effects and a little music track above. Step two in the process is to show you how I created the motion background from a static image. Down here, you see this track at the bottom, which is just a static image. And you can see it here on screen. Notice how I've scaled it up to about 122 here, because when we apply behaviors like we have here using the pulsating and drifting behaviors, that we actually will have motion going on, which will move this image up and down. And because we don't want the, the, the default color of the canvas to be exposed, we scale a little larger. And this suffices to get the end result that we want. Notice on the side, I've sort of hidden all the tracks because we're just looking at the motion specifically of the background for the moment. Now let's take a look at the behaviors. So first you can see we have pulsating and then drifting. I'm going to just delete the drifting behavior so we can just see how the pulsating behaves by itself. See the pulsating moves there by itself. And of course we tuned that. Now I'm going to undo the deletion. And now if we look and continue, you'll see the pulsating has another little dynamic to it, a little more smoothness and other motion. So what have we done to create things to get this effect that we have? Well, first off, you're going to see here in the behaviors, there's an in, during, and out. Notice that I've changed the in and the out for both of the behaviors to, to, uh, to be none. We're only interested in the during behavior in that way. So right from the get-go, all we are is looking at the same execution throughout the cycle, which is the during behavior. For the pulsing, pulsating behavior in the during, you can see that the scale is default to 104, sorry, is 104, what we're using now, but the default would be 108. And I'm going to go put that back to 104. And by changing it down to 104, I've added, made it a little less dramatic, the pulsating. And then I've also adjusted the loop time here to be 2.5 instead of the default of one. And by doing that, I've made the loop time longer, which means it's sort of slowing down the frequency of the pulsing. So that's what I did for the pulsating. Next for the drifting, if you go in here, you'll see that there's an ease out circ, but um, the default there was ease out quint. So just letting you know that you need to play with the movements and decide on what you know gives you the desired result you're looking for. And there's lots of permutations and combinations. Play with them and choose what makes you aesthetically pleased for the end result. Next, I adjusted the loop time. You see here we're using 2.0, but the default is four. So what I've actually done is increased 
uh, the speed of the loop, and that's in order to add a little more frequency uh, to to the drifting. So that's what we did, and this is the end result, as you can see on screen. I'm quite satisfied with that because the quote looks nice against that. In step three now, we bring in the fly-in behaviors and also do the pivoting of the text. So as you can see here, I've got, I said before, multiple sets of the text that fits our design style. So I'm going to open this group. And by the way, the grouping was done again to support the ability to pivot all the text together. So as you can see, these two areas where the pivoting happens, it's done at the group level in terms of the application of the custom animation. Now, if we open up this group and we see we've got our three pieces of text here. So if we come in, the three pieces of text are all there on screen. They're each their own separate callouts that were added, text callouts. But what we want to focus on now first is looking at the behaviors. So in the fly-in, you see the key thing here is we have object level. So we change to object from what was the default text left to right. So I'm going to put that back um, to object. And then our movement is ease out back instead of the default of linear. So we can see here how nicely this executes when we, we play it to, to come in. So c contrast this. To what the default is. So I just did a little shift to show you an example of how the behaviors of the, the flying text would look according to the default. So see the defaults here as, as text uh, type text left to right and movement linear. So let's see what that looks like. As you can see, it's much slower and, and this is not the desired effect at all that I want. I want the object coming in, uh, the lines as a full, full line together. So that means object and then I change the movement and we'll, you know, just compare that back to the, what I was using, what we're using. Do you see how the text comes in nice and quick and it has a little sort of bounce that, that has to do with the, um, the behavior that we've, we've tuned here. As you can see, the ease out back brings in that nice little bounce in the, in the, in the text when it lands. And lastly, the speed shows 92 instead of the default 90. And the reason we did that was again, just to add a little speed to the whole motion. For the out behaviors, we're also using the object and, and ease out back as, as well there. And the out behaviors you see coming at, at certain points where you're gonna see here on the white text on the see this is starting to come out. So it's using the same kind of behavior, but I guess, you know, it, it's just a, a quick, flash to you and it's a very quick same thing here with the the yellow text coming out again that's using the object and the ease out here ease out back and the speed doesn't have to change because it's actually a little faster by default in the out it's at 92 percent instead of the 90 we saw now let's just take a little deeper focus on the pivoting as you can see here we have two custom animations that are on the group level and as you can see at the start of this keyframe, we're there. And then at the end, we've rotated 90 degrees. So in the top right here, if you look at the properties, not only have we got a Z axis rotation of 90 degrees, but we also have a scaling down to 79.3. And this is the key reason why that pivot is done on top of the group level, because the scaling was adjusted to get things in this vertical format. And as you can see, if we go to the end keyframe here, the scaling is all proportional and nice. And if that scaling was done inside the group, I'm going to undo the change there. If that scaling was done inside here, we would not be able to proportionally do the scaling clean. So just sharing with you that the group level gives a cleaner result when we're doing this. Another point to observe is that after the pivot, you can see before the next set of uh, text comes on display, there's this little gap in here which is sort of like a, a, a slight timeout before the next set of text comes. Likewise, after the next pivot, there's a little gap here in time before the last set of line comes. And again, this is about tweaking and deciding where you want to actually do the pivot. So you'll, you'll play around with the location of the pivot and time it to get it right so that it feels right when you execute it. One last element I want to show you is that inside this group, you can see after just after the pivot happens and then that little timeout, I did a split of the, the text so that I could have a uniform length in the remaining section and time that the white section here, the white um, 
rows of, of the text are, are on screen. And so that when the flyout happens just about now, this is the white text coming out so that things approximately come together as they fly out. And observe that in, in the flyout, you'll see here, this says fly in property, but when you go to the out level, it's actually, the style is called flyout and it's object, again, because that's what we want. And an ease out quad is the option that I chose to use. So it's consistently uh, handled the same way in terms of that split concept in the first set and also in the second set of lines here, you know, so just after the pivoted end and the new the text starts to come in, you're going to see the yellow stuff start to fly out now. And again, we can just see here in the out, we have object and ease out quad. In step four, we do things just a little slightly differently as with the text normally, it comes through a fly in, but then we have an, a custom animation we added here. You know, again, custom animations just come from uh, the list of animations, the top left one there. And, uh, and our begin keyframe is here, and then it, we stretched it out for this duration. But the end keyframe actually shows that we scaled up to 159.4%. And the reason we did that is because I just wanted something different in, in the text for the last bit. So I wanted the text to, to grow in size. And then slightly after that, I wanted it to bust up, which you see happen here. And so Let's see how that happens. The bust up happens because we're using the fly in, as you know, the fly in brings the text in and in the, in the, uh, during there is none because we are using in that area, our, our, our uh, custom animation that we showed before, but in the out phase, you can see that we have the explode, the explode instead of the normal fly out. So let me put that back. I just undid it. And then we switched to text instead of object here and linear. And that's done because when the explode happens, I want the text to go everywhere, not at an object level like we did when we had the lines go out before. And of course, this is accompanied with a nice boom noise. So let's just play that so you can see the finish piece. Wow. Creating animated kinetic text quotes with pivoting creates a very aesthetically pleasing and engaging result. If you want to look more closely at the fly-in pivoting quote example I created here and use it as a template for getting a head start to make your own creation, then go ahead and download my free project file now. All you have to do is click the link on the screen now or in the video description below. Please remember that you will need Camtasia 2018 release to work with this template. To learn more great tips on Camtasia, be sure to check out the playlist featured on this page or click on the link in the video description below. See you in another video soon.